Hello, my name is Mark Biasotti. And thank you for your interest in this short video on boundary feature. In the next 12 minutes, I want to show you this feature and some of its many capabilities for creating complex surfaces. So here is our completed spoon. Let me turn on real view so you can see that a bit better. Notice the fluting at the end. It's amazing to me how simple objects like these, if you look at them closer, are rather complex exercises. But with the boundary surface, we're going to make this a rather easy thing to do. So let's roll forward to some initial sketches that were created. Here I have a 2D and a 3D sketch line. I'm going to create a, an additional 2D three-point arc so that we can create the boundary for our spoon portion. So by placing this three-point arc, I need to also create some sketch points and then make Pierce relationships with my existing sketches. So by placing these two, I'm now going to create a Pierce relationship with those existing sketches. And then with the 3D sketch. And then looking at the front view, let's make the center of the arc coincident with the right plane. And now we have a pretty well constrained arc. I'm just going to drag these points out. doesn't matter where they are. And now we have what we need to create our first boundary surface feature. So let's invoke the boundary surface. And as always, I can just start picking curves. But in this case, I don't want to use this entire curve. So let's uh, deselect this. I'm going to use the Selection Manager and show you the power of the Selection Manager. Selection Manager, you can create a curve building up any series of curves, but then you can delimit them also, creating or, or helping to eliminate a lot of pre-work. Let's take the second curve and slide its endpoint and snap it to that sketch. And now you can see that I've created my first boundary surface with a delimited area of the original curves. Now I need to trim this, and so I have a sketch on my top plane that I'm going to use to just trim away the extraneous portion of this boundary. So I'm going to pick this inside area, and now I have a trimmed area that represents the spoon portion of the spoon. Let's roll forward and create the rear handle area. If we look at this end sketch of the handle area, I basically have three splines that have been constrained to construction geometry. And I've done this so that I can easily reshape this area by just dragging my construction geometry and resizing it. Construction geometry is very powerful for doing this in sketches. Let's create the outer boundary of this handle area using a 3D sketch spline. Now with 3D sketch splines I can start to move them around using my handles or my control polygon in this case, I'm going to use my sketch triad to move it in specific directions in 3D space, making it a lot easier to reposition. I can also constrain it to existing external geometry like this construction line, make it parallel, which is my design intent. And then let's pull on the weighting handle to move its influence out a bit. And then go to the end of the spline, and let's make a C2 constraint with that existing boundary edge. And then pull the weighting out a little bit and get it the way I want it. That looks pretty good. Let's create one additional sketch, and I'm going to drag this reference plane back a bit this area. And then on this plane, I'm going to create a three-point arc. And this three-point arc is will be an interim first directional curve to limit the fluting as it moves forward in the surface. 
So I just need to constrain or pierce with these existing sketches the endpoints of this arc, make that coincident with the right plane, and then pierce this with that 3D sketch spline. And now I have the ingredients to build my boundary surface. But at the end I have a complex sketch. I'm going to create some reference points on this edge, and I'll show you in the boundary surface how I use those to control the surface. Let's go ahead and create our second boundary surface. And using my selection manager, I'm going to create my first directional curve group. You can see I can pick elements here and then make a group.